Hi, this is Riley McHenry doing case study three for MC4143 with Professor Lewis. Uh, today we'll be going over Miss Magazine and we were giving given micro issues, macro issues, and some mid-range issues. So um, the magazine is about uh, is having this issue they went out of business and they came back but their main focus is to not have advertising in their magazines so that they they rely completely on uh, the buyers uh, and their readers so the micro issues of the uh, situation are is misinfringing on the advertisers rights to freedom of speech is Miss courting financial ruin by shunning the advertising that supports it is Miss depriving its readers of an informative medium through its elimination of ads. If a magazine edits an article to satisfy an important advertiser, does it have any obligation to inform readers of the decision? So the first question is Miss infringing on the advertiser's right of freedom of speech. I personally believe that Miss is not infringing on the advertiser's right to freedom of speech. Uh, Gloria Stein, who um, is mentioned in the article, co-founder of Miss, uh, makes this clear when she wrote her expose over how advertisers don't want their material next to controversial issues. Since the magazine is a liberal and feminist magazine, there will be controversial topics discussed. On the topic of freedom of speech, the advertisers can go through any other media, me, medium or magazine they wish. The magazine has a right to publish what they want and also pick who they do business-wise with. And uh, this includes advertising agencies. For the next question is Miss Courting Financial Ruin by shunning the advertising that supports it. I strongly believe the magazine uh, that magazines and similar news mediums are only surviving by their advertising partners. Miss is allowing financial ruin by not receiving funding from any form of business and relying on their readers. Miss in 1989 was seen losing money with 50 or 550,000 subscribers. What's going to keep them from failing in a similar fashion if they haven't changed anything? Uh, the third question is Miss depriving its readers of an informative medium through its elimination of ads. I do not believe that the readers are being deprived of any informative medium um, or advertisements. I believe <clears throat> that readers buy a paper or a magazine or news article based on its content and what the author places inside the pages. People read fitness magazines because they want to be fit, not because they want to buy the next best headphones. But, you know, placing the headphones in there makes the people re want the headphones. But it's not the key information that the magazine is trying to portray to the public. It, uh, readers seem to also want less ads and more content based on the line the magazine write uh, and more content. Uh, this shows, uh, or this goes into how the magazine rides on the line between unvarnished advocacy and the demands of people who pay the bills, as quoted in, from the article. It seems that people don't want to pay more for a better version of what they want. So, yeah. <laughs> if a magazine edits an article to satisfy an important advertiser, does it have any obligation to inform readers of the decision? I believe changing the advertising isn't necessarily important to the public. I believe they should provide either a web page or index in the back of the magazine that either states who they are in connection with or why they made the decision to pair with said advertisers. But if the advertisers are changing the magazine's content, then yes, the readers need to be informed. It becomes key evidence to who wrote the paper and whose opinions or facts are being uh, relayed to the public. So now we're going to focus on some mid-range issues. Uh, there are three of them. The first one is, um, 
Are consumers able to distinguish between editorial content and advertisements, and does this matter? I believe this matters. However, not many re readers do know the difference. Personally, when I when reading, <laughs> I don't always know what is official magazine content and what is an advertisement. I believe it is key to make a difference known so that the reader knows what they bought the magazine for, as well as what is of key importance to the magazine's values. So what is the actual magazine and then what is an advertisement? It's key to have that, you know, distinction so that people know what they're buying and then what is additional to help support the magazine. Uh, so the next question is, how could Miss Magazine responsibly satisfy the desires of its advertisers and its readers simultaneously. To satisfy both the advertiser and the reader, it could be beneficial to add one or two advertising companies into the magazine. This would benefit the advertising companies as well as save the magazine from failing. The people would benefit because their beloved magazine would cost less due to the new income from advertisements. The magazine can remain strict on who advertises and keep it in the reader's interest as well. The uh, third question for mid-range issues how would the particular advertisers' problems of a liberal feminist magazine such as Miss compare to another periodical such as Newsweek? The liberal feminist magazine will be a lot more biased than Newsweek. Any advertiser must know what they support and how to advertise the same product to many different outlets without twisting the actual product. So, for example, you know, say deodorant. In a liberal feminist, feminist magazine, um, the deodorant would be shown empowering women and showing their strength and how, you know, women are awesome. While in another magazine similar to Newsweek, uh, it would be more focused on how aesthetically appealing the image is. So the deodorant might be shown in a pretty color or something that's appealing to the eye or the senses not necessarily an emotional bit base. So now going to the macro issues, uh, we have three of these as well. Is it the media's job to censor advertisements for the public? I believe it is not their job, but th their right. A children's magazine or medium has the right to censor what they deem inappropriate for the age group. A feminist magazine has the right to censor advertisements that could be labeled sexist or anti-feminist. Each outlet is allowed to keep with their ethical values and has an image that they try to send to consumers around the world. It is critical that they watch and critique what advertisements are part of their image. Because without their image, then they no longer stand for what they say they stand for. Uh, second uh, question, by running an ad, is a publication endorsing the product being advertised? If a publication runs an ad, they don't have to endorse it. However, they will be viewed as if they are. If any altercation were to arise due to an ad, the publishers would have to have a better argument than we published that, but we don't believe in its ethicalities or stand by its values. That just doesn't work. They would be sued, they would be criticized, they would lose many of their viewers and readers and their business. So according to subscri subscribers, viewers, and other forms of income, if you advertise an item, you are endorsing it, whether you say you are or you're not. Is a magazine ethically required to be an open forum for all advertisers who have the ability to pay according to what standards? Um, I say no. Each magazine has a different code of ethics and values, and thus not every advertising company will be freely published. If we turn this argument around to what are advertisers' ethical requirements on supporting papers, we see that advertisers also do not support every magazine, uh, and this is based on their code of ethics and values. So if we have... Uh, the feminist, liberal feminist magazine, you know, many uh, 
advertising agencies are not going to want to support them because they're not liberal and they're not feminists. Um, and also then the feminist group or magazine would not want to have them support them because they don't, their code of ethics will clash together and not combine. Um, I believe that just because someone can pay doesn't mean they are worth your time. And that is it on Miss Magazine uh, and for Case Study 3. Thank you.